What's up, peeps? Barry Davis here. Just want to talk to y'all a little bit about river fishing. The river, basically yesterday, I didn't even come out here because I knew it was going to be blown out pretty well. And when it's blown out, it's hard to fish. Sometimes you need to give it a couple of days to calm down. I've been in Alabama fishing the national championship with KBF, so I haven't been on the river. We had a lot of rain come through from that hurricane that come in on the Gulf Coast and come up. I don't know how much we had, but it was a lot of rain. And if you look, you can see the water's dingy. So that makes a lot of difference in what your plan's gonna be to start with. So I darkened down my colors a little bit. I don't go blue blacks that often. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm paddling while we're doing this, or I'm standing here trying to get in an eddy to where I can stand and talk. But that's what I wanna talk to you about. If you look at this water, see all those swirls? All those swirls is turbulent water. Usually, right where those swirls are over there that's really bad looking towards the greenery, that's usually stuff sticking 10, 12 inches out of the water. So that's how high the water is here. So there's a lot more water pumping down the river than normal, which makes a lot of turbulence. So what do fish do when it gets turbulent? They look for calm water. I'm in an eddy. I'm in a pool, whatever you want to call it, dead water. See the leaves? There's no leaves in turbulent water unless they're moving like wildfire. This is a little creek it runs in. So it's a good little area. I just missed one here. It blew up on my frog. It probably a 15, 16 inch fish. I caught a 25 and a quarter a while ago, a new personal best. And it was in a dead spot. And then I caught a 15 and a quarter in another dead spot. And I just had this blow up. Normally when I fish the river, these sticks that I said covered up by a foot, foot and a half of water now, I fish behind them, I, and this it's almost too turbulent there right now. I still throw to cross them, just see if something was laying down in there. But it's the dead pools, the eddies. Anytime you see leaves swirling, you see four or five bottles and a basketball, which is down there. I should have took a picture down there while I go. There was a little miniature basketball like a kid play with, and a, a bottle and two or three sticks in a swirling pool there. So you know that's a trash area, it's dead water. That's the kind of places you want to hit, especially when your water's up. Don't give up on your river when it's blown out. Now, when it's blown out of the banks, it's dangerous. I've got a motor, and I still paddle some too, and I've got the command stand and stuff for when I want to stand and lean on it, but that's not what I'm doing today. I'm staying seated. I'm standing right now because I'm in dead water, but, you know, you can make the river work for you too. It won't be your best day fishing, but when you can come out and catch a 25 and a quarter, on a day that you figured you probably would get one or two decent fish and that was it, you never know what's gonna go on. The more time you spend on the water, the more chances that you have to make everything work right for you. What I caught it on today, the ribbit frog. Let me get it. Y'all gonna excuse me, I'm trying to hold my phone with my hand. But the ribbit frog with the double hook set up on it, that's it right there. A lose pro one of my newer reels and I've used it so much speed spool has already wore off the top of it and this reel ain't even four months old if that much and it's on a ALX Zolo toad face imagine that toad face what do I love about the toad face? It works a toad really good. It works ribbits. You just basically throw a ribbit and reel it in. You're not popping it. You're not making it try to walk. You're not doing all that stuff. But this is a fast tip rod. And matter of fact, let me read what exactly it says on here. It's a 4.5 medium heavy fast. 3 eighths to 1 eighth. 3 eighths to 1 and an eighth ounce. So you can put a decently heavy frog on this thing. I like it because I can do the ribbit frog with it. I can do a booyah frog with it. I can do a spro frog with it. I can do a KVD popping frog if I want to. I can do any frog I want and make it work. I can also throw large topwater baits, big stick walking baits and stuff like KVD puts out and some of the other brands. There's a lot you can do with this rod. It can double as a worm rod if you need to. It's got the fast tip to work what you need. I have thrown heavy shaky heads on it. I have thrown Texas rigs on it several times. 
this is one of those rods that is is keyed up for being a toad rod but like several of the alx rods if you're a co-boater or something like that in a big tournament or you're fishing in a kayak and don't want to carry five or six rods and that's the max it it doubles triples and quadruples on what you can do with it the deputy is another model that does that the maestro is a model that does that i use it for wacky you can also use it for ned rig shaky drop shot there's a lot of stuff you can do with the maestro uh alx rods is bad and you see my hat up there dakota lithium picked them up a couple months ago that's what powers everything here except the motor i got torquedo so torquedo's got its own battery but everything else on my boat is powered by dakota lithium and i'm gonna get off here and quit making it sound like a advertisement this is gonna be posted on youtube and it'll be shared around y'all take care Y'all subscribe to my channel. I got to pick up and get things going a little better on that thing. I got to get me some cameras. My cameras got stolen and I never have replaced them. But I got to get that stuff back going. Y'all take care. I'm signing out. I'm going to go see if I can catch another fat gal. Bye, y'all.